Bonjour les amis, Kirby Jambon ici avec vous autres, avec un autre leçon dans le français louisiané. Thank you for joining us today. Again, this is Kirby Jambon and uh, this is our YouTube channel that we use to discuss many different ideas. Uh, Louisiana French, um, French poetry, lessons for students in French immersion or other French speaking students, and a variety of ideas concerned with French education, Louisiana poetry. And hopefully you enjoy the different uh, types of videos that we have on my channel and thank you for tuning in. Uh, for those of you, uh, this is your first video with me. Um, I began this YouTube channel back in March when we began the time of social distancing. And um, I began, I have basically no equipment, very, <laughs> very, not very good equipment to make videos, but I'm learning. Uh, my first videos uh, have problem with lighting, but you know, bear with, bear with me. I'm trying to learn and hopefully uh, I may be able to afford one day some better equipment. So, uh, uh, but today we want to continue our lesson in Louis lessons in Louisiana French. And this lesson um, could be considered a review or a preview, depending on upon how you want to use it. Um, I'm going to review the basics of beginner's Louisiana French as presented in the different videos that I've already done. Uh, and, it can, and it can be just a preview of what's to come if you haven't seen those yet. So if you wanted to check out this one first, then it'll kind of guide you towards where we're going to be heading with um, Louisiana French. And once I do uh, this video and a couple of more, perhaps as a review preview kind of thing, then we'll probably be ready to go on to a next level, maybe what we might call an intermediate level of Louisiana French. Okay. Now, just to begin with, um, Louisiana French, for those of you just joining us as well, Louisiana French is the variety of French spoken by those who might consider themselves Cajuns, Creoles, um, Native Americans, and American Indians like the Homas and different um, other uh, Native American groups who speak French in Louisiana, and also uh, folks who picked up French in uh, in the south in South Louisiana, um, just being exposed to other French speakers or in school of some sort. But this um, Louisiana French is the French of South Louisiana. Now it's not a standardized language in the sense that there are regional differences. There are distinctions between Louisiana French and what linguists would call Louisiana Creole, sometimes called Creole French. Um, and they are all, all sometimes called Curivini as well in the language. Uh, Louisiana French, many folks also refer to it as Cajun French. Linguists these days tend to use the term Louisiana French as a more inclusive term because not all persons who speak the language do identify as Cajun. But uh, I identify as a Cajun, so when I, you know, if I use the term Cajun French, it means it's the language that I speak. But I tend to use the term these days more Louisiana French just to be more inclusive of all the groups um, that might speak this language. Um, so we're going to talk about Louisiana French. Now, when I say Louisiana French, again, some people think that, well, it's old French or it's broken French or it's a French mixed up with other languages. Well, nah, well, let me explain that. Is it old French? Well, there are certain parts of it that are quite old. Yes, there are certain expressions that are old, but there are also some things that are modern. Um, there are expressions in the language that come from other languages, but Every language has words that come from other languages. Is it broken? No, not at all. Uh, now, someone who might not speak it well says they, they might sit, call what they speak a broken French, but it is not broken. It is an effective means of communicating in French with other Louisianians and with French speakers outside of Louisiana as well. I've used it around the world. And so um, it is still French. It is a variety of the language, a variety of the language. Uh, you know, just as the language, the, the variety of French spoken in the south of France might be different from the variety of uh, French spoken in what we call Metropole in the region of, around Paris, uh, which would be different than the variety of sp uh, French spoken in Belgium or the variety of French spoken in Quebec or the variety of French uh, variety of French spoken in uh, in uh, New Brunswick or in uh, Bay Saint Marie in Nova Scotia or in Africa or in different African countries um, or in the Caribbean. The varieties of French change, and in English, varieties of English change. Uh, I'm sure you don't know that the variety of English spoken in Mississippi is not quite the variety of English spoken in, Miss, in New York, or it's not quite the variety of French spoken in, uh, in London, or the variety of French, French spoken in Australia. So, I'm sorry, English. <laughs> I said French. So, there are varieties of English, um, and there are varieties of French, and there are varieties of Spanish. I mean, every language has a different way of speaking it. So, that's what I mean. It's not a separate language. Some people have a way of speaking it. Now, some folks might think it's too different. Well, one of the problems we have is that 
most French speakers uh, who are raised speaking a particular variety of French also learned French in school and was able to hear television and media resources in other varieties. And it wasn't always the case in Louisiana French. Many were not able to speak the language in school and might not have heard other varieties very much. So for that reason, they might not be used to other varieties, but it only takes a little while to sit down. I remember my, my grandmother one time when I would play for her videos of different types of uh, French speakers. And she, she goes, did you, I go, uh, did you understand everything? And she would go, uh, she go, well, pas tout à fait. Mais je suis sûr, si on s'assit au fur et à mesure, on va se comprendre. All right. So she said, not all together, but if we, if we, if we sit down together, uh, you know, after a while, I'm sure we would, uh, we would understand each other. And uh, that was, was something that she had said. And so I think it's the same way. So sit down, let's have a little French Louisiana, Louisiana French session and learn a little bit. So let's talk about, begin this review preview, depending on how you use it, with the four basic verb tenses, the four basic verb tenses that we presented in the beginner's lessons. Now, again, that doesn't mean it's the only four verb tenses. There are verb tenses. All the basic verb tenses you found in international French or in English or in many languages are also found in Louisiana French. They might conjugate differently, but they are found there. Okay, um, so the four basic, four basic verb tenses I want to talk about. We're going to talk about basic present tense. For example, let's try this. Je parle français. Je parle français. I speak French. Je parle français. Je is I, parle, and in français. Uh, now, we tend to say je rather than je more often in Louisiana French. So, je parle français, right? Je parle français. Try that. Je parle français, which means I spoke French. I spoke French. And when we make the past tense, we use the, um, the form of the verb uh, avoir, which is to have, followed by a, the past participle of the verb. And so it becomes je parle français. So listen to the two again. Je parle français. I speak French. Je parle français. I spoke French. Now, the present progressive tense, that's what we call in English the ing, which uses the present participle uh, form, is done using a form of the verb to be, which is et. And uh, the way you say it with I is je. In, in international French, it might be je suis or je suis, but we say je. That's right, je. And then you would use this word après. It means in other, in other ways, it means the word after, but in a verb tense, it's like saying the ing form of the verb. So, je suis après parler français. Try that. Je suis après parler français. I am speaking French. Yes, you are. Good job. And then, je vais parler français. That's the future tense. Future tense, you're going to use the form of the verb uh, to go. So, it means I'm going to speak French. And the way you use the, and the way to say it, the form of the verb to go, which is aller, the way you say it with I, je, is je vais. That's right. Je vais. Je vais parler français. Okay? So, let's try all of them. Je parle français. I speak French. J'ai parlé français. I'm, I spoke French. Yes, you did. Je suis après parler français. I'm speaking French. Yes, you are. Et je vais parler français. I will speak French. And yes, we will. <laughs> Very good. And in another of the early lessons, I went through the basic greetings. Uh, some of the same greetings are found throughout the world, like bonjour, bonjour, hello, how you doing, good day. Uh, I'm sorry, how you doing? How you doing would be, comment ça va? Uh, ça va, it's going okay, yeah, all right. Ça va bien, ouais. tu vas bien, are you doing well? So some of the basic greetings you have in international French are there as well. One of the videos I do uh, talk a little bit more in detail about that. A couple of uh, specific Louisiana greetings that we use in Louisiana French. You might hear quasadi, quasadi, which is kind of literally what that says, what that says, you know, uh, or quasadi in certain regions. In certain regions, we use the term qua for what, other regions we say qui. Quasadi, uh, quasadi, which means like, so it's like saying what's happening, what's up, what you say, kind of thing. Comment ça se plume? Comment ça se plume? Yeah, you know, how are things plucking? How are the feathers plucking? It literally means how things are going. Comment ça se plume? Um, and uh, soin toi, soin toi, soin toi means take care of yourself. Soignez vous, take care of y'all. Y'all take care of yourselves. Okay. All right. Uh, talk about the verb. Uh, also speak about the idea of the use of the the pronoun. Uh, you with different verbs. Um, you have in, in in French. You have the. We're going to talk about Louisiana French. Three different uses of the word of. Uh, well, there's more than that, but of the word you, I should say. Uh, tu as a subject is the singular form, and it's the considered. It's considered sometimes the personal form that you when you say when you speak to one as a subject. You tu sometimes pronounced t, not tu. Try it. tu or t 
but never tu. Tu means all, okay? So tu or ti, u. That way you make that sound with that u sound. The way you make that is you make your mouth like an o, but say an e. U. So try it. Tu. Tu. And if you have a problem saying tu, say ti. Don't, go, don't say tu, but say ti if you have a problem with it. And that's the u saying. It's used very, very often. We use it probably more often than they do in international French. Um, there is the word vu, which is uh, what we call the vu de politesse. It's a polite, respectful vu. In Louisiana uh, French, it was reserved primarily in, in, in different regions to address older folks. Uh, children address adults as vu. Um, um, if you were an adult, you might address someone like your parents or your grandparents' age with vu. Okay? Uh, in some regions, it wasn't used as much. In some places, it's kind of died down, but it was used very often. I mean, my maternal grandmother used uh, vu to address my paternal grandmother, and she was only a few years older than she was, you know. So, um, internationally, it tend to be used with strangers, with people you didn't know you would use vu, uh, didn't know well. Um, um, and it's kind of like, it's eased up a lot, I've seen internationally. More often, they use tu rather than vu more often, okay. And then the other word I want to talk about is vous autres. In Canada, you'll probably hear it pronounced vous autres, but we say vous autres. And vous autres is the plural you as a subject, uh, and as an object as well, vous autres. Okay, so vous autres is like y'all, as we would say in the South Louisiana. Uh, so tu, vous, vous, and vous autres. Now, there are object forms, tu and toi. Vous is the same object, vous and vous, and vous autres is the same object, uh, vous autres and vous autres. All right, so in one of the videos, we also talk about four basic verb expressions, very popular ones, and that's called je veux, je peux, j'aime, and je connais. All right, je veux, je peux, j'aime, and je connais. These are the... Um, Verbs for I want, I can, I like, I know. So let's try it. I want, je veux, I can, je peux, I like, j'aime, je connais, I know. Okay, and we talk about that into great detail. Um, and you can see different ways to say it. For example, if you wanted to say it with the different subjects, I also go through all the different subjects. So let's try it with ve, which is to want. Uh, it's the, well, vouloir is to want, but the way you pronounce it most of the time is ve. So if I want to say I want, je veux, you want, tu veux. He wants, il veut, we say i, sometimes il when it's followed by a vowel, right? A veut, which is she wants, we typically say a rather than l, internationally it's more l and e, uh, and, uh, but in parts of Canada and mo most parts of Louisiana, we say a and al, l is reserved for her rather than she. On veut, try on veut, on veut is a good way of saying we, uh, you, I mean, they do have, the, we do have the term nous for we as well, but uh, we typically more often use the term on for we. So, we want, on veut, okay? You might hear nous autres, on veut, have the word nous autres, which is like for us, okay? All right, the, with the vous de politesse, which Randy mentioned, it's vous voulez, vous voulez. It's the only one that sounds really differently if you think about that different. And then with vous autres, the plural, which is vous autres veut. Um, in, in Canada, I've heard that they'll use vous autres, but they'll use it, vous autres voulez. But we would say vous autres veut, we'd use the veut for. Um, for they, you can hear things like ça, or us, or eux autres, or i, for they. And typically that's followed by ver, except in some communities where they might use the term voulant. So, and you can see uh, in the lesson, uh, I'll go through a lesson where we talk about how to conjugate also je peux, j'aime, and je connais. Okay? Now, uh, just to let you know, if you wanted to make it negative, you would add the word pa. That's in another lesson as well. We practice that. Pa. And then you, but pa goes after the verb in the sentence or after the first verb. Okay, so if I wanted to say, um, I want, I would say, I want, uh, je veux, I don't want, uh, je, uh, je veux pas. Uh, you like, uh, you like, tam, you don't like, tam pas. Okay, um, she, um, she can, a peu, she can't, a peu pas. Now, if you put, if you wanted to say, she couldn't do some add another verb following that, then the then the next verb would come after the pa. For example, you might have the verb danser, which is to dance. Okay? So if you want to say she likes to dance, all right? A lam danser. She does not like to dance. A lam pa danser. Okay? Manger. You uh I want to eat. E je veux manger. E je veux manger. I don't want to eat. E je veux pas manger. Okay? Uh uh, let's me see, uh, uh, could, which is the verb to sew, could, um, okay, um, uh, il peut could, il peut could, he can sew, il peut pas could, he cannot sew, he can't sew, 
So, and you see a lot of verbs that go through different different verbs like um, jouer to play and apprendre to learn. One of the things you'll hear is like that DRE verb in Louisiana French tends to be not pronounced. It becomes, we just kind of extend that nasalized vowel sound, apprendre. All right, okay, apprendre. Tu veux apprendre le français? Rather than say, tu veux apprendre le français? You know, you want to learn French. And so we talk about different verbs. That's all in there. We have lessons dealing with Louisiana place names uh, we did before, or if you're just joining us, you will do if you look through it. Uh, things like, because they do change in French, you know, like, um, you know, you would say La Pointe de l'Église, that's the town of Church Point, you know. Uh, la, uh, you have um, uh, Roiville is the town of Youngsville, you know, have that. Um, and so you have different towns. And the way you say even, uh, you know, things outside of Louisiana, like, uh, you know, le Texas, la Californie, les États-Unis, which is the United States. Okay? Um, and you'll hear uh, a couple of things talk about contractions. One of the things, you know, contractions exist in any variety of French, but they're, they're not, uh, in, in English, they're optional. You can say I can or cannot or I am or I, I'm. Uh, you can say can't or cannot. I'm or I'm, I am, uh, you're or you are, you have a choice. In French, they're optional. And uh, they're not optional, I should say. Uh, they're mandatory. So, you know, like for example, we don't say, to say I have, we, no, we don't say je ai. It's always je, je. It's never je ai, it's je. And in any variety of French, it's like that. The interesting thing is Louisiana French, we have even more contractions than they do in, in international French. For example, international French, to say you have, they would say tu as. But we always just say ta. Or you are, tu es, we would always just say te. And that's said, you'll hear that said in, in, in familiar French throughout the world, but uh, they don't teach it as the way you should say it. It's supposed to be tu as or tu es. But for us, it's always te and ta. It doesn't change. An interesting one that we do, I just mentioned, was again, was the word for I am, uh, which is je suis, for those of you who studied French, and you might have heard in casual speech, je suis, but in Louisiana and parts of Canada, I've heard, we just, we say je, je, that's what je suis becomes je. Um, then we talked about um, uh, more detail into the verb tenses. We have lessons dealing with the past tense. We talked the past tense, the present tense, and the future tense. Um, uh, I give you a lot of verbs. A lot of one of the things we realize in in French is that um, verbs um, there is uh, in, in where we put two verbs, one verb right after the other, in a sense. Um, in uh, in English, we have to add the word to, like I want to dance. We would say it that way. Okay. In French, there you don't need the to, but you would use a different form of the verb, and um, and the form of the verb is uh, usually indicated by its ending. Okay, so for example, the uh, the very common regular verbs, most of them end in what we call er, and it's pronounced a. So listen to all these verbs: écouter, rester, acheter, marcher, danser, fouiller, uh, passer, jouer, pratiquer, embrasser, lever. These are all very very common French verbs, and when you when you um, Put them following, so je veux danser, you're going to hear the A sound. When you put it in the past tense, you also hear the A sound, but it's spelled, instead of spelled with the ER, it's spelled with an E with an accent, with an accent, accent aigu. However, in the present tense is when you don't hear the A sound. So you would hear like, uh, 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 je veux danser, or j'ai dansé, or je vais danser, you will always hear that A sound, but in the present tense, je danse, I dance, je danse. I am dancing, you'll still hear that A sound, je suis après danser, and you'll hear that as well. All right, so and there's a whole list of verbs that you can look, we're going to talk about or you we have talked about. We talked about weather words, special words associated with weather. You had homework using the LSU Cajun French website. Uh, we had a lot of different words. Uh, we talked about how to ask questions and things like that uh, in Louisiana French. And so speaking of questions, we'll save that one for another video. But I encourage you right now, if you've not, um, if you've not, uh, going on to uh, look at any of the lessons you can you can do them in order or you can if you want to pick a topic that you like pick a topic I, I list pretty much what underneath each, each topic um, that um, what they're about you know if you want to learn something specific in each topic um, eventually we also do other topics uh, these topics the um, other topics other than or follow these documents that's what I talked about I wanted to talk about the documents if you want the documents please join our Facebook group um, there is a Facebook group called Louisiana French lessons you can just ask to search for it on Facebook and the documents are attached there or you can uh, mess uh, you can private message me on Facebook uh, to and there is a, a Facebook chat group as well but I think the the group is a little bit better to you so you can do that as well through Facebook so I can get you the documents that way 
Um, and uh, they're all attached there and you can use them. There are some lessons that don't go along with the documents. They're along with the LSU Cajun French website or other things. And so you'll, you can check those out as well. So hopefully that's a good uh, br uh, review preview. We're going to do another little review preview coming up um, uh, in a few days. And, um, and that way you can uh, get yourself ready to pour parler le français louisiané. And hopefully everyone's staying safe and I wish you all the best. And again, shukur be jambon. And if you enjoy this video, please uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, you can also click the little, la, la petite cloche, you know, the little bell, and it'll give you updates for when I post new videos. Um, please recommend it to your friends, uh, pass it along. Uh, and if you're so able, I would more than appreciate any, uh, any donations so I can update my equipment <laughs> and get some better equipment eventually to, uh, to make even better videos for you. But it's been my pleasure to do that regardless. Please, uh, uh, um, it's just been my pleasure to be able to do this for you during this time of social distancing. And as I say each week, soin vous autres, soin les autres. Take care of yourselves and take care of one another. Okay? On va se voir à la prochaine fois. Au revoir.